in Okay. So we have introduced the modernized space. This was a uh, was uh, this thermotype. Experimentize with the expense. Affairs in E. Classes and E on E Okay. Now, uh, one of the things so there exists such a was one by space, but it is not compact. And so we want to still uh, compute some numbers of n, <coughs> but as an uh, obstructive theory, of virtual dimension zero. In fact, it's a self dual obstruction theory, so the, the tangent is dual to the obstruction. Um, okay. Now we wanted to associate some numbers to it, so we want this obstruction field to have a virtual fundamental class, but we still don't have virtual fundamental class because it's not compact. So we use a trick, so we find. Virtual so, um, so we want to compute this as expected dimension zero. So, what we would want to compute is the uh, operation on the virtual fundamental class of this model of space. Of uh, one because the expected dimension is zero. And this would be the written in the associated with it. So now we have to make sense of this because there's no virtual fundamental class. So, and so we do this by applying uh, the localization formula to this and taking what one gets if one applies localization to this as for each. And so let's see how that goes. So I want to recall uh, we, before doing that, I want to uh, uh, review the other way how, so this modular space was studied by Anakan and Thomas. They have another way to describe the same modular space, which is sometimes you wish more dramatic or relates it to Thomas, Thomas, Thomas and Ray, which is respect to purpose destruction. So, so this is an alternative uh, description of the same modular space. So we look at the, uh, let's say, the total space PS is the total space. Of uh, this line bar. So this would be a, a threefold, obviously. And it would be a non compact Calabria of people. Okay. 
and uh, now I will only describe roughly what happens because we need it proper, but we take some more make it precisely. So I just want to see how we associate to such a x pair uh, a sheet on this total space of Ks. We have a torsion sheet with what element sheet two. So just to to pair of E and uh, such a x pair P e, e, Yes, we want to associate and so experiment in our modelized space. We associate, I mean, I now see it somewhat roughly, the uh, space of Ks fiber. I give it as follows. So, so if uh, we have a point X in S, so let me just see. So let me try to see how to see it properly. So, so we look at the point X in S. We have the fiber Ex X, and the P Ex Okay. Um, okay. And so uh, this. So this uh, this homomorphism has eigenspace has uh, eigenspaces uh, in uh, uh, so it has decomposition into eigenspaces. Sheet at that point will be non reduced. So 
So there is a, a number of things uh, to check here, but this is anyway, I'm not going to really use it, but this is an, or at least not explicitly. And so this is this kind of description. <clears throat> and so if you see, uh, if one believes this, so this would be a sheet whose support is a finite number of points in every fiber over, of Ks. For S, let me just the eigenvalues. So it is a, so this defines um, a torsion sheet, coherent sheet. Yes. I would say of dimension two. That means this is the dimension of the support is two. You need it that you know you the, the support over every point in S, the support of which lies over is precisely the eigenvalues. So find dimension. Okay. And uh, so, uh, I mean, I cannot really, so if one, I think I'm not going to almost take some 10 cent page to explain why this works. So it's, I cannot uh, really explain it. But I mean, you can imagine at least you can make yourself a picture, you know, so you, you can see you have a, an endomorphism with values in this time bundle of, you know, basically an endomorphism of the fiber, then, you know, Eigenspace decomposition, and so you get uh, you can make a sheet over the total space of the line bundle where the fibers uh, which lives only over the corresponding eigenvalues and do this. But obviously, the non trivial thing is that this all makes sense and goes together and gives you something else. But you know, this somehow ties it up a little bit with uh, Thomas and Barents, where one would actually also consider such. Uh, Q sheaves of the uh, lower dimension to uh, study uh, to get some invariant. So, in some sense, it's this. And you know, here it's also somehow more clear that one would get, one gets also for general reasons, uh, a self rule of such theory because one is in a, one is, yeah, in a uh, Calabiao situation. Okay, but I will not go really into this. This is just the part. Now we want to talk about this. Star so star acts on this n r c one c two. In some sense, in the obvious way, you just you know you have an it just ends x on t who scales this phi. So by uh, t times t is equal to e well, uh, maybe for the future um, when we want to work with this we actually also want to say we want to uh, specify that C star is also supposed to act on the canonical bundle and uh, we want it to act in the canonical bundle with weight one, so by rescaling the factors. So E times, uh, e times an element of the canonical bundle is just E times X when we say it. So, <clears throat> and we can, <clears throat> so here anyway, the method is just by rescaling the Now, if you look at this alternative description with respect to third construction, you can describe it differently. So in the respect to third picture, so in fact, it's not spectral curve because there's a surface here, but it's you know this is standard in the context of curves. Such a thing. So, yeah. It's a spectral surface, but there is, you know, if you, you have uh, you know, Higgs fields on curves have been considered much more and studied for a long time. And one way to study them is by such a construction. 
and uh, which is then called the spectral curve construction. So this the support of this sheet would be a curve then, and that would be the spectral curve. Spectral curve construction. And the action can be described as follows. So from on total space yes uh, uh, so the action of C star is uh, is induced by scaling the fibers of the economic one so you have a sheet on this total space and you just rescale the fibers, you get the reaction on the sheet. Yes. Um, and this is what I meant when I said that we kind of keep in mind that we want uh, also to have C star on. On KS by the scaling of fibers. Anyway, so now, so we, we will see the fixed point locus. So, so this. Uh, And this allows us to apply virtual localization to define the invariance. So, if you, I will review the usual localization formula, which says that if you have a smooth compact drive, you have an action of C star, then you can uh, uh, you want to integrate something over the smooth compact thing, you can instead. Uh, integrate the restriction over it, much if you divide by which were in other class over the fixed point locus. And uh, now, in our case, it's not compact, but we could do the same here by just using this as, as the definition. Um, but here we are also in the virtual situation, we have the virtual parameter class, so we have to use a version of the localization which works in, in the virtual setting, which is a, a virtual. Uh, formula of the Now, so now I just want to do localization, which obviously if you know it, it's very boring, but uh, I try to do it fast. First, I uh, do the usual localization formula, unless everybody knows it. But, uh, very homology and localization. I don't know. Does everyone know it? What? Is this yes or no? <laughs> what? What? You can say a few words. A few words. Well, I, I'm not maybe able to say a few words. Did I say? Anyway, if you go back to the experience of So this is um, so I write I will write for simplicity T for C star because that's very easy to write. And so let T X on the say non zero by X. So T is any of any of any so first we have to explain homology. X. Yeah, so this is X. 
which uh, I can write like this. This is H star of the universal family over times X T. So we have, so let us see where we have T over T, which is interdimensional projective space. This is the universal star family. We look at this thing, so we have here an action of T star and T, such as the equation goes to this DT. And uh, so now this X goes on ET and X. So we take the diagonal quotient by the diagonal action and we take the homology of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is a, is a module over the equivalent homology of this point. Which, according to this, is just et divided by t, which is dt, so which is h star. And this will be that x over t, where this is supposed to be t lies in the second formula. So it's a phenomenon. Actually, I can um, I can take this. Uh, I mean, for later I will give you data anyway. I can take this t to be the equivalent first term class of a line bundle from this point. So I take the trivial line bundle on the point with the action which just multiplies the fiber, you know, b times t is times t so with the extra weight one. So this was the, the trivial one c and with the action the t times so to say the number d in the fiber is the t action of weight. So there's a different turn class of this. this is. Anyway, but anyway, it doesn't matter, it's just a polynomial ring. Anyway, we'll go back to this again. Now, um, okay. So now we want to look at the localization formula. So, um, so I first say it in general. So, if E over X is an equivalent vector bundle. So that is an action. So X has a C star action. We have an action on E, which is compatible with the action on X. Um, then uh, uh, we have equivalent joint classes. C I which line is equivalent to homology. Now I don't really need to know how this is done in general. I'm now only interested in the case that the action of T on X is trivial, but it acts only on E. I want to know what the effect is. So now assume. Action of 
as a fiberwise action. So the, the, the action of T on E is fiberwise. And S C star is a commutative is commutative and so on one can prove that A E would split into uh, eigenvalues. And right e sum uh, j j j yeah. some integers but it's a finite sum uh, so where e j are eigenbundles. In the most good way, so if, if uh, so, on EJ the action is that if T acts on element fiber of EJ, this is just acting by multiplying the element by T to the J. So it's an iron bundle. Uh, so maybe I should write like this. Yeah, just say some, but like this, it's not like, anyway. So, J, so I say these J's are integers, but it's not all integers, there's some J's. There's J in Z, but it's a finite. Uh, I mean, if I got like J in Z like this, okay, so this is this thing. So, it's split like this into I'm. So anyway, we would say that so that what this works would say is that T acts on PJ with weight. And then in that case, uh, we can write. So obviously the equivalent total chart class of E will just be a formula of the one integer product over these J's over the square from the J's and uh, the equivalent total class of E. We write the formal splitting, so the determinant of J, so it has a bundle. C of J equals one plus X one minus and so on. One plus S R from splitting like what we choose different class. Um, so these are the terms, then this equivalent thing is thus. That one is, is as if one would tensor arise it by something whose first term plus is t, which besides what one does, we need one tensorizes it by the correct design bundle. And so, okay, to the correct power, so this will be uh, the product of what? So, product of i r in this case, one plus xi. And now here it's acted with weight J. If I write ah. yeah, it's a bit confusing that I use T in two different ways. So this is a, a one T and there's another T. I mean, maybe you can for a moment yeah, accept that plus um, J times T. Maybe to make it clearer here, I call this the X. Something like that. Okay. And uh, now 
uh, if um, okay, just to keep it in mind. So uh, obviously, if you take the total churn class of this case, um, I just also want to remind you what the Euler class of the bundle is. So the Euler class of the bundle. Also, this would just be the same as the churn class corresponding to the rank of the bundle. This is the equivalent of the number of CP and the rank of the E is an element in the K group for a difference of two bundles, so ET of uh, say E minus F will be ET of E. Okay. This will, it's not if or clear that this makes sense, but it does make sense because one has SST here, so that makes it possible to invert the order. So we have a no, you, you don't have to, in order to, so if you take the, the top churn class, you don't have the one here, but we don't have to, you know, to invert cohomology classes in order to invert this because it's a phenomenon T. You can invert it. Okay, so now the localization formula says the following. This is the original. Formula so let X compact is it T are actually this alpha C in element in the homology of X. And so maybe. Yeah, maybe I think it is the complex of some dimension. Dimension B, and I take the dimension and let tilde in the experience homology be elliptic. So that just means you just take the class of equivalent homology so that if you kind of Go to the homology, which means if you set t equal to zero, uh, you get this original one. You can obtain this by, you know, if this is, for instance, an expression in churn classes of some bundles, which are equivalent bundles, then you can take the equivalent churn classes of those. It corresponds to the taking equivalent lifts of uh, all the bundles you want. And then the statement is that if you take Integral over x over this alpha, this will be equal. I think I want to do more. So, the all account of the difference of two bundles is a four series of t. So it's, the way I wrote it, it could be a power series of T, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a, you would have to see, but I think it would be a power series of T, yes. I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, there's, a, you know, here I call it localization formula. It's kind of some consequence of the usual localization formula, which somehow tells you how to compute and to express uh, the homology classes in terms of uh, somehow equivalent homology classes on the fixed low side, but this involves also uh, localization that means you have to be able to invert T. So, and anyway, the statement is that then uh, if I take one to evaluate on X plus alpha, then I can. Instead, the sum over all the fixed point locus, loci, so 
symmetric component xi of fixed point locus uh, and then i integrate over the x is fixed point locus is a restriction of this alpha tilde respect to xi divided by now, <clears throat> it's actually kind of amazing if you look at this formula the way I wrote it here. On this side, you have a number. On this side, you have a rational function with t. The claim is that they are equal. So that means this rational function is just a number. Ah, uh, yeah, after we sum up. No, otherwise, not. individual <laughs> things are. Uh, so there's some calculation. Yeah, yeah, there will be some complicated. Uh, yeah, there's lots of calculations. You can um, produce this to, you know, if you try to compute whatever, which is h squared on t2, you know, the numbers one, if you can compute it by localization, you will find some interesting way of talking about it. One is a sum of special functions. And it's not very deep, but anything is there. Okay, now we've come to virtual locus. So, yeah, to be, I mean, have to be to completely honest, so would properly, uh, probably think. Uh, it would take a long time, but I would just state it and you are really that it works. So now, again, we assume that we have M, which is compact, and it has a star action. Uh, and and active variable of the virtual dimension. So, B. so maybe one should say, <clears throat> so I think one has to be very careful what one means by this, but intuitively it's kind of Kind of clear what one has, one has construction theory, one has so this is this complex uh, of sheaves, which uh, we have just two, two vector bundles which uh, correspond. And so these are supposed to um, obviously have to such a way that there's an action on them which is compatible with the map. What I have this I'm of I squared, the other one, which is, and so everything must be, must have this star action and the maps must be compatible with it. And if one has this, so, so then it follows this. First, there's some work to say what this means, but you know, and then if one has given the correct definition, one can show. Uh, then every connected component uh, MI of the fixed point locus has also an induced obstruction. And uh, this is you can find in these papers like of Weber and Hanwe. This is work part of the many decades. <coughs> so in particular, uh, and so uh, 
but I, I have not even done it. In the moment, to understand this and certainly not to explain how this works. And so, in particular, we have a virtual fundamental class. So class And so now, if we take the virtual tension space of M, restrict it to such a component from I, the so I is now, uh, so this is now a complex of two vector bundles on a space on which T, X, trivial. So if you know each of these, so whatever is 0 minus 1 or 0 minus minus 1, no, 0 minus 1, um, and the in the K group, and <coughs> which are just vector bundles with a C star action on, uh, on, on, on the space on which C star X trivially, so they become composed into eigenbundles. So then we have, therefore, that we can write can write this as sum over some finite set J, Vj minus the sum over some case Wk. Maybe I still write J, whatever the case are. But these are Time space, so okay. not here we are in the case of the sum and not sum. So, where uh, so that means that so here M is after all E0 multiplied by this is right. So, uh, where these are these two things in the complex, no? and so that would mean that this. Uh, J so zero sum over finite sum sum J but these eigenspaces spaces um, such that D if I have an D and the fiber here I should not where we have if D is in the fiber then again T and similar for E1. So get it. Here, one different sum. Vector one here, then the T. And uh, the same. So for E. Okay, so this is, and so then uh, I want to, there's, I can say what the virtual normal bundle of the fixed point group is. I mean, you can imagine if you have, uh, this is actually necessary for this formula to make sense. If you are, so the tangent bundle for the fixed point locus will be uh, the, the sub bundle. Of, uh, of the tangent bundle where the action of C star is trivial. Whereas the normal bundle is the sub bundle where, or whatever, you can more or less write this diagram, is the part where the action is non trivial, with X with, with, with some weight. So, therefore, um, not because you know, if you, uh, this is the part where. The action moves you away from the uh, from the thing because you actually you know, move on the fibers of the normal one. So um, and so the same can one take say here. So the the virtual normal bundle of uh, the 
Speak Smart Locus. It's just in this assumption, will be just the part where the weight of the action is not zero. So this is uh, it's equal to the normal one. M, virtual one, uh, of uh, sum over all J as before, where now J is different from zero, the weight is non zero, so minus J as before will equal to J is not zero, J minus corresponding sum. So this, uh, so in, in the Papers they say it's the moving part of the tension. Moving means that the things which are moved by the system. And then we just can write down the same formula. So the virtual organization. So again, let's say alpha in elements in the control space, alpha tilde. So maybe I want it again to make it simpler in the dimension of index. So D was a new there. The virtual dimension of M was D. Then I write down the same formula. So the integral over the virtual fundamental class M over this class alpha is equal to the sum over all the components, connected components of the six point locus. Um, of uh, a, a declaration on the virtual fundamental class of the I with respect, obviously, to the E, this induced uh, obstruction theory of uh, the field that was restricted to I, so which means the pullback of the class of MI by the embedding of the uh, divided by the square order Okay, so as you can see, the formula is exactly the same as in the non virtual case, only in the cases where it's necessary one puts the beer in that uh, he has to know where it is necessary, then we get this same form. And one has to make sure that everything is written here. Makes some sense. And in particular, I was a bit uh, imprecise. I didn't say much about how, what it means to have an expert for the construction theory. You can imagine, but we have one to make precise and what the induced purpose of structure theory is, how one defines it. We have some work needed. But then uh, one gets the same form. So, okay, so that's very simple. And now we want to just say, so we want to define so we can define the operation invariance now by just formally applying the formula. So Thomas so Thomas. Define 
on the frame this. So that means uh, we put uh, say we put say so what the rough width event should be this so we want it to, to take this modelized space and take R C1 the work fundamental class and each case one of it. As I said, this doesn't make sense because it's not compact, but we just find this the sum. Over all connected components, uh, say for the motor vacuum and I. Uh, well, this is as now stands for the whole thing of fixed point locus is integral over the virtual fundamental class of N I. And then, now in this case, you want to integrate one. So obviously, one is one. So we can put one here. It's one over the equivalent order of the virtual component. So this is the definition. Uh, obviously, it's a bit crazy to find something like that. We have a theorem which applies when this thing is compact, and we use this definition when things is non compact. It could very well be that the answer is uh, complete nonsense, but it turns out it makes uh, sense. We might get something nice. And as I said um, the other time, there's another definition which looks much better, which is in terms of the so called Heeren function. I don't know whether anybody of you is aware of that, and everybody knows this, but anyway, there's some kind of if you have a self dual obstruction here, like in this case, you can associate with a constructive function on the space, and you can just integrate this against, uh, I mean, you can kind of motivically make a number out of it. You take the sum over all the low side where this constructive function has a certain value multiplied by the order number of that, this gives you a number. And this is then, you can show that if the thing is compact, it gives you the same as integrating uh, one over the virtual fundamental class. And so you could do this here too, it would be much simpler. And uh, I think also it's easier to compute, but then uh, it turns out that the answer is also very simple, much simpler than what one wants. And in particular, yeah. not related to what the physicists want. So if I want to compute this now, obviously one has to understand what the fixed point locus is. So we have to want to take these integrals over the connected components of the fixed point locus. So what are those? I don't know precisely. <laughs> That's a bit difficult. I mean, maybe you can, but I have just, I think I have just two minutes. So, I mean, what can I? Oh, what, what were you going to do? Yeah, let me see whether there's something which I can sensibly say. Yeah, no, I mean, it takes, I mean, it takes a while to describe this. Let me just see. Uh, 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 there's something with that. Maybe I can at least explain one thing, which is not what one wants in general. So we will have to describe the fixed point locus in general, but now I just want to look what happens in the case which we are actually not dealing with, mainly when uh, the geometric genus is zero, or more precisely when the canonical class is kind of negative. So, um, and in that case, I claim that there's only one contribution. So there are not so many fixed points of side. So this is, um, so, so if, say, the degree of the canonical line bar, so H as, as is the negative, then for uh, E5, which line is fixed point locus, uh, 
those. And uh, so it follows that this takes point to just the model as this. Okay. I mean, uh, I just wanted to, so in particular, in that case, um, I just want to say that very briefly. So I wish. So this is by stability. Yes, uh, so uh, who was that? I don't know. Anyway, so I can answer. I think it's Andrea Nicole. So, yes, in the paper of uh, Tanaka and Thomas, they also compute uh, in their function, they get something, and they, uh, the answer is uh, some, you know, if you take the generated function, you get for something some very simple rational function, which is not what one wants. It's certainly different from, uh, from what I. Uh, uh, and announced uh, before. Anyway, it has been computed in the paper of Tanaka Thomas, the first paper. Uh, there is a computation with the pair of functions. Thank you. Okay. So, by so it's by stability. So, I can, so if you remember, stability was in terms of, um, so I think it just. I can maybe roughly say it in. So if I call uh, P for a uh, sheet, P, I call P e of N the reduced silver polynomial. So this is chi of uh, the sheet. So whatever we are here on S. Uh, e tensor H to the tensor N um, divided by the rank of E. Let's reduce the phenomenon. Then one can also express the stability in terms of that. And so the statement was that the reduced polynomial polynomial of the subsheet, which lies in the kernel of a window, which is invariant under uh, under the X map, uh, under the X field, must be smaller than the reduced silver polynomial of the big P or of the big one. And equivalently, one could also say if you have an invariant quotient which lies in the open of the state, then it should be bigger. The reduced silver polynomial should be bigger or larger. So then, so, so this kernel, so let P. Then uh -huh. yeah, okay. Now, actually, some more that I'm wondering whether it's actually true. Anyway, so what one would have is so then obviously the kernel of P and the co kernel of P will be uh, sheets, but uh, let's say for the image of P are uh, invariant under P. Uh, so we must have that the reduced table polynomial of the, for instance, 
So the, the image of D is a subsheet of this one, and the co-kernel and the kernel is a subsheet of this. So we must have that PE of N. smaller than the e of the t of the image of t and this is smaller than t of the sense of s for n sufficiently large. And so in particular we have this inequality here. And now what I actually have to do is a little bit more, but just hope that it's true because I'm not using it. So under my assumption, I seem to have to do that. So this is obviously unless P is equal to the zero map, because then there is unless P is equal to zero or P is equal to is an ice map. Things are just equal to those. Um, and now, you know, uh, so I <coughs> to make the so they actually say it, and like Thomas do it with smaller equal. I thought to make it easier for the presentation, I would make this. But now, with this, this argument actually just says then uh, this inequality is not possible regardless of anything, because Ks, the degree of Ks is negative. So this will always, always be smaller or smaller. So smaller and The only problem with this proof is that I have not assumed that there are fixed point process. <laughs> so, so we have to maybe can I can check until next time whether this is true in complete generality or whether I have made a mistake. Anyway, the uh, statement is right, and the proof is more or less like this. Only I'm slightly worried about the fact that I'm proving it. I've proven much more. I've proven that uh, the statement uh, that this thing without. So I should maybe check whether this can be true. Anyway, sorry about that. But, uh, you know, um, maybe I shouldn't have to. <laughs> but that's, you know, um, okay.